want to bring in Maggie Haberman, White House correspondent for the New York Times and CNN political analyst. Maggie, we're going to get to William Barr in the terrace in just a moment. But I do want to get your reaction and maybe your insight into what we saw on this show yesterday, which was the president on his way uh, to Colorado in this 17-minute 17 free, 17 freewheeling news conference that was full of lies uh, and untruths, including new attacks on Robert Mueller. What do you think is behind that? Where is the president following Robert Mueller's first public statements. I do want to um, just asterisk that this was not a news conference. This was him walking out of the White House sure. and, and calling these a news conferences. It's not like everybody gets to come. So and ask Great. their own questions. I just want to make that clear in terms of process. But where I think his head is, is I think that he saw Mueller on TV. Remember, the president interprets the world through television. And Mueller had not appeared on TV talking until now. So it caught the White House's attention in a big way. It was a big neon sign. And Mueller stood there very clearly and said he couldn't say the president didn't commit a crime. The president, I know that there is a, a political strategy around some of the president's advisors who think that trying to essentially dare House Democrats to impeach him will have a positive political effect for him. But I don't believe the president actually wants to get impeached. I just don't. I think he thinks that that would be a sign of failure and that it would not help him in 2020. I, I know, again, there's the Bill Clinton analogy. Bill Clinton was not actually on the ticket uh, in 2000, and so we're never really going to know how that would have played out. I don't think that he wants to see this go further, and I think that he continues to see this entire investigation as, you know, delegitimizing his victory. You know, the, the response to that, unfortunately uh, for him, is that the broader world that is concerned about U.S. institutions and election security doesn't necessarily care that his, his feelings get hurt. Uh, by this investigation. In our armchair analysis segment that I know you enjoy so much, <laughs> um, he seemed angrier yesterday than we had heard him. You know, there are sometimes he comes out and he's sort of playing mm -hmm. and sparring with the press. And yesterday he seemed more irritated about some of the, I mean, Mueller didn't say anything that dramatic that wasn't in the report, but somehow it seemed to have angered the president. Do you think the president has read the report? Because I do not. And so I think that when he hears Mueller say that on TV, again, him interpreting everything through the screen that is in front of him, I think that that had much more resonance than almost anything else that has happened, in part because Bill Barr delivered a letter and then went on television himself at an actual news conference, sort of, and said, you know, this was not a crime. He used the president's own language, talked about collusion, which is not actually a criminal thing. Uh, and so, and this was essentially the president's PR language. So uh, I think that the president had felt pretty good about that. And then I think he saw Mueller in the box, and I think that that spooked him. I'm so glad you said that William Barr uses the president's own language because it's a really interesting segue to the interview that William Barr gave to CBS News, which is actually playing more right now. But listen to how the attorney general answered the question about the president accusing past officials of treason. Listen to this. You don't think that they've committed treason? Not as a legal matter, right? But you have concerns about how they conducted the investigation? Yes, but, you know... Sometimes people can convince themselves that what they're doing is in the, the higher interest, the better good. They don't realize that what they're doing is really antithetical to the democratic system we have. That first answer, Maggie, not as a legal matter. No, well, why not just say no? Right. There's only, there's only, um, there's only one form of treason that I've ever heard of, and essentially with that, which is a legal matter, and that gives, uh, frankly, a permission structure for the president to keep saying it. I mean, that's really the only thing that I can take away from that. We are again also seeing Barr in that statement, and I think it's important to note, appear to predetermine the outcome of this investigation that he is in charge of into the investigators. And I think there, there are reasons that have been given for trying to figure out the origins of this, to, for looking at the conduct of certain people in the FBI, although that has been looked at for some time now. This is the, there are at least three investigations into this, but Barr already appears to have a verdict, no, at least in part. What did you part, hear there that you heard was his verdict? That sometimes people convince themselves they're doing something for the greater good, and then that last part, that's certainly true. A lot of people convince themselves that they're doing something for the greater good. People who work in the, for the president's White House also say the same thing. Sometimes that they the think attorney that, generals feel that way. Right, but, but that he went on to then say, you know, and it's antithetical yeah. to the democratic process, that's a very loaded statement. He says mm -hmm. they don't realize that what right. they're doing is really antithetical to the democratic system we have. That's how William Barr, the attorney general, chose to phrase it. And to me, that's such a contrast from what Robert Mueller said in his, what he yes. wanted to be his closing statement yes. to America, yes. which is don't forget, 
the Russians attacked Correct. us, and it's really, really bad. Correct. And what Robert Mueller, in fact, said is that that was a charge that ought to, um, you know, be of concern to, I'm paraphrasing, but be of concern to every American. It is not an issue that we hear the president talk about. I mean, so Barr seems to be sort of accepting the idea that the institutions that the White House chooses to represent are the ones uh, that should matter. I, look, th th this president, we've talked about this before, this president is not um, novel in certain ways. There, there has been an erosion of norms of certain institutions going back for some time. I know there's been a lot of talk about responding to sub congressional subpoenas. Eric Holder didn't respond to a congressional subpoena, and I don't seem to recall the same level of anger around it um, on the left uh, as there has been around what's been going on right now with the Trump administration. And those are not grand jury subpoenas. But, I, you know, I, I don't think the president uh, does everything in a new way. He does do it in a more extreme way, and that is what you're seeing here. I just wonder if in his investigation, the, the fourth investigation, as you say, it's, there's a lot of redundancy here, um, that he's going to look at all of the FBI's text messages. Because during that time, in the run-up to the election, I wonder if any agents ever exchanged any anti-Hillary texts. Right. In other words, they, they right. have so zeroed in on these two agents as somehow being representative of this deep state. And if we look at everybody's text messages, it's possible that sometimes people talk about their own personal feelings with their friends. Right. And it's it's also that, uh, look, at the end of the day, this is why people are concerned about Barr having this declassification ability that the president granted him last week, because the concern is that he's going to cherry pick what gets made public to portray a certain narrative. On the subject of cherry picking, William Barr, in this interview, we're just hearing it for the first time, addresses the criticism over his summary, and these the words he chose to use the first time he released it, of the Mueller report. Listen. I was just trying to state the bottom line, and the bottom line was that Bob Mueller identified some episodes. He, he did not reach a conclusion. He provided both sides of the issue, and he, his conclusion was he wasn't exonerating the president, but he wasn't finding a crime either. I do not. I was just trying to state the bottom line. And the I was just trying to state the bottom line. And also added another bottom line, which was saying Rod Rosenstein and I have determined that because there was no underlying crime, he could not have obstructed justice. When you read the report, there are certain, I mean, in, in every instance of possible obstruction, the Mueller team laid out evidence for, evidence against. There were a couple of incidents, one involving Corey Lewandowski, one involving Don McGahn, about, uh, related to a New York Times story that he wanted McGahn to refute. And with Corey Lewandowski, he wanted him to essentially play some role in firing Jeff Sessions, uh, reporting that we had done, uh, you know, Corey Lewandowski, private citizen, mm -hmm. reporting that the Times had done a couple of months earlier that uh, found some similar instances. Um, in those cases in the Mueller report, and again, I still wonder how much of the public has actually read it, um, there was not a whole lot of countervailing mm -hmm. potential in, in the Mueller report. There was not a, but here's what supports why it wouldn't be obstruction. They basically just appeared to conclude it was without saying it. Um, you know, Barr is clearly frustrated that Mueller did not deal with that, that piece of it. Barr has argued that it was within Mueller's purview. Mueller has explained why. I, I am not a DOJ official. I'm not equipped to judge which one is actually more right on the law. But I do know that it, thinking that that summary, when you then say the president, you know, didn't commit obstruction and here's why, is not going to leave a pretty clear impression. Look, what the president has done every single time when there is a vacuum is he has rushed in to fill it. And that is what he has done in the 30 years that we have all been watching him publicly. Um, a lot of other people, including Mueller, were playing by known processes that have been followed for a number of years. The president did not. Guess which one is winning a messaging war?